Hey guys, we're back with the third video of Dill Academy. I'm Dylan Mendoza, and today we're going to be do, doing paper 3H of math from May 2008. So let's start with it. Okay, so question one, always the easiest of all the questions. You're just being asked to find the value of 3.6 times 4.8 over 5.6 minus 3.2. So to do this, let's just deal with the numerator first, which is the top part. So 3.6 times 4.8 is nothing but... 17.28 and this has to be over now we'll deal with the denominator 5.6 minus 3.2 is nothing but 2.4 so your answer should be 17.28 divided by 2.4 which is equal to 7.2 okay so the second question says that there's this bag containing red black and white discs and they say that the number of black discs is equal to the number of white discs so that means Two black discs, two white discs, let's just say. And then there, the probability of picking a red disc is 0 0.6, so, right? So now, first of all, um, we'll call the probability that she'll take a black disc out of the bag X. And we'll call the probability that she takes a white disc out of the bag Y. Okay? Now, the number of black discs is equal to the number of white discs in the bag. So, if there's the same amount of discs in the bag, if there's a total amount, let's say 10, the number of white discs is equal to the number of black discs. So, the probabilities of picking each of those di discs is equal. So, that means x is equal to y. So, now that we've got that established, we know that probability always adds up to 1. So, that means the probability of picking a red disc, 0 0.6, uh, 6, sorry, and the plus the probability of picking a white disc, which is y, plus the probability of picking a black disc, which is x, is equal to 1. And from this equation, we know that x is equal to y, so we can substitute y with x. So 0 0.6 plus x plus x is equal to 1. So 0 0.6 plus 2x is equal to 1. So now all we do is use basic algebra to solve for x, and then we'll find the probability that you'll take a black disc out of the bag. So subtract uh, 0 0.6 on both sides, you get 2x is equal to 0 0.4. And x divide 2 on both sides is equal to 0 0.4 divided by 2, which is nothing but 0 0.2. And that's the probability that she'll take a black disc out of the bag. Okay, so question 3 basically gives you like a graph with three triangles, P, Q, and R. And 3A asks to describe fully the single transformation that maps triangle P onto triangle Q. So first of all, P is exactly the same as Q, apart from the fact that Q is much larger. So the fact that Q is larger should tell you that Q is an enlarged version of P. So that means that you know that the transformation is enlargement. Now with enlargement, you have, you have to decide two things. You have to decide the scale factor as w at which it's enlarged by, meaning the amount it's with, at which it's enlarged by. And you have to also determine uh, from which center it's been en enlarged by. So first of all, we'll determine which center it's been enlarged by. And to do this, all you've got to do is take like um, corresponding points. So basically, these two correspond. These two correspond. And these two correspond. And what you do is you just draw a line straight through. Straight through. And you just extend it. And then you draw a line straight through this one as well. And you extend it. And you draw another line straight through this one. And you extend it. And the place where they all meet is the center of enlargement. So this is the place they all meet. And in this case, it's nothing but 1, 1, 3. So enlargement from center, 1, 3. Okay, so the next thing to determine is the scale factor which is enlarged by. So basically, these two triangles are similar, meaning we can compare them. So basically, if we, if we want to find at the amount at which, at which it's enlarged by, all we have to do is compare one side of the big triangle to the small triangle. So all we need to do is really find a ratio between the two to find how much bigger this Q triangle is. So how do we do that? So first of all, we find the length of corresponding sides. In this case, the length of Q is over here. It's 4 because it's 9, 9 minus 5. 
And over here, the length is, I'll, I'll write it down here, it's 6 minus 4, which is 2. So the length of the bigger side is 4, and the length of, this, uh, the, length of the bigger triangle is 4, and the length of the smaller triangle is 2. So all we've got to do is write a ratio, basically. All we have to do is divide the bigger side by, uh, of the bigger triangle by the smaller triangle. So all you do is 4 divided by 2, which is equal to 2. So enlargement from center 1, 3 by a scale factor, scale factor of 2. And that's it. Okay, so question 3b basically asks you to uh, describe fully the single transformation that maps triangle P onto triangle R. Now, triangle P and triangle R are exactly the same shape, size, and all of that stuff, except R is kind of like uh, in a different direction as P. Now, how can we explain this? Basically, it's almost like R has been rotated. So, it's rotation. Now, why is it, why do you, it's more of like, um, I would say, like something you got to see, you know? Like, for example, um, for example, if I rotated P 90 degrees clock, uh, counterclockwise, basically, this would be 90 degrees, so it would be like this, and then the shape would be kind of like this, and it's more about imagination, I would say, like, because it's a bit difficult to imagine, uh, but, yeah, uh, one sec, uh, yeah, so basically, it's, it's about looking at the shape and determining it, and when you have rotation, what you need to know is the center of rotation, so what point it's been rotated on. In this case, these points are both like on the same, uh, these points, these corresponding points are on the, uh, the shape still lies on the same point, meaning it should have been rotated on that point. So it's rotation on 4, comma 4. Uh, oh, I'm really, really sorry, one of my silly mistakes again, I didn't see the shapes really properly. Um, okay, yeah, so I'll start from the beginning. Basically, R is kind of like, uh, it's in a different direction to P. So, first of all, what you need to do is, you need to look at the points. So, in this case, let's label all of these points. Let's call them, this is 4, 6. This is uh, 3, 4, sorry. And these two are 4, 4. And this one over here is 4, 3. And this last point on the edge is 6, 4. Now, basically, this point corresponds for both of them. This point corresponds to this point, And this point corresponds to this point. Now, do you notice something interesting? Like, the corresponding points, the Y and the X has just flipped over. I, I, meaning they've swapped spots. So instead of 4, 6 in, in P, it's 6, 4 in R. So what does that tell you? That actually tells you that it's a reflection. So now, what you have to determine is on what line it's been reflected. And basically, that can kind of seem kind of obvious. It, it has to be reflected on a slanting line. Because if it was like, let's say, reflected on a straight line, right, P would just be like this. It would be like the same shape. Or if it was reflected on a horizontal line, P would kind of be like uh, this or something like that. But in this case, it's like, um, it's been uh, like oriented differently. And it's not been oriented straight or sideways. It's been oriented both straight and sideways. Meaning it should have been uh, on y equal to x. So it's reflection on the line y equals on y equal to x. Also another reason why it's y equal to x is because if you notice this point 4 comma 4, it didn't change like Basically, it stayed the same as it was. Like, if it was, uh, if P was on 4, 3, it would have become 3, 4. That's what I'm saying. So that means the line must have passed through that point. And that's why that point stays constant for both of them. Again, sorry if I don't explain this perfectly. It's a bit difficult to explain because it's more about, like, looking at the shape and, like, understanding. And, yeah, so if you have any questions, just post them in the comments below. Okay, so the fourth question is basically ratios, and they're saying the ratio of the weight of copper to the weight of tin is 3 to 1. You have to work out the weight of copper 
in 280 grams of bronze. And they say bronze is made of copper and tin, sorry. So, in basically like, let's say a copper in a bronze bar. So there's some tin and there's some copper. This side is tin and the white side is copper. So, basically, the amount of um, copper to tin is 3 is to 1. Right? Now, that means that 3 out of 4 parts of the whole bronze um, bar is made out of copper. And this is because um, it's made out of 4 parts in total. And out of that, 3 of them are copper. So 3 out of 4. Okay? So now all we, we have like the fraction of uh, copper in the bar. All we need to do is multiply this fraction by the mass to find the mass of copper. So it's just 3 over 4 times 280, which is nothing but 210 grams of copper in uh, 280 grams of bronze. Question 5, you're given um, a, uh, basically uh, it's about sets and uh, this, not, this I'll explain each set separately. Basically this sign is uh, all of the numbers possible in the question and it, it says that it's all odd numbers. Uh, set A is, um, says 159, 13, and 17. Those are the elements. Set B has a certain amount of elements. And set C has a certain amount of elements. Now, A1 is asking to list the members of the set of A intersect B. This upside down U is nothing but intersect. And what intersect means is uh, what they have in common. So, all you have to do is look at A and B and decide what they have in common. Now, if you look at it, they have 1 in common, so write 1 down. They have 9 in common, so write 9 down. They have 17 in common, so write 17 down. And that's it. A2 is asking for A union B. This U is nothing but union and means all of the numbers in both sets. Okay, all of the possible numbers that you can have. So, in this case, look at A and B again, same thing. Uh, in this case, you have 1, you have 5, you have 9, you have 13, you have 17, you have 25, and 33. And these are all the numbers possible. You don't need to repeat. Like, I know in A and B, they both have 1 and 1. But in A union B, you don't need to keep repeating 1 and 1. They just want to know all the possible numbers that could occur. And yeah, so this is it. Okay, so for question 5B, um, they're uh, asking you, why does A intersect C? equal to zero. This thing is basically nothing in common. It's, it's a Greek symbol for, for not like zero, meaning why, the, why do they have nothing? Why is A intersect C equal to zero? It's basically because if you look at both sets, A and C, you'll see that they have nothing in common. So all you got to do is the reason that A intersect C is equal to zero, it's because they have no elements that are common between them. And that's it. Okay, so question six is my favorite. It's just trigonometry and it's basically the easiest. And basically you're given a triangle, asked to find x, the angle, and you're given the adjacent side, which is the side that the right angle and the the angle lie on, and you're given the opposite side opposite side to the angle. So, first of all, you have to look at your Soka Toa, which is basically these three uh, types of functions. Basically, you're given your opposite and your adjacent. So, if you look at that, what function relates them all? It's the tan function. So, all we do is tan x is equal to opposite, which is 3, over adjacent, which is 8. So, x is nothing but, it's not 3 over tan 8, it's tan inverse of 3 over 8 and that gives you a value of x as uh, 20.556 but they're asking you to give it to one decimal place so it's 20.6 degrees well seventh question is even just as easy and they're just saying the diameter of a circle is 7.8 centimeters so calculate the circumference circumference is nothing but the perimeter of a circle and there's a nice little formula for it and it's 2 pi r and uh, 2 times r is equal to d, so this equation can also be written as pi times d, because 2 and r 
this 2 and this R, they form D. So it's just pi D. So all we got to do is do pi times 7.8 to find circumference and use your nice little calculator which you have and you'll get an answer of 20.5 centimeters. Remember it's in centimeters because it's a length. And I've already corrected this to three significant figures, so, yeah. Question 8 has given you uh, three patterns of sticks uh, with a certain amount of sticks in each pattern. And they're saying that this rule can be used to find the number of sticks. You multiply the pattern by 2 and then add 1. And in question 8a, all they're saying is n is the number of sticks and p is equal to the pattern number. So, the question is really like the answer. So, they're like, write down a formula for n in terms of p. So they're saying multiply the pattern number by 2. P is the pattern number, so 2P. And then add 1 to that, so plus 1. And that'll give you, the. this is to find the number of sticks, so that'll give you N. And so that's your equation, simple. Next question is just as easy. You have this equation from 8A, and they're just asking you to make P the subject of the equation. So all you got to do is subtract 1 on both sides, so minus 1, minus 1, and you'll get 2p is equal to n minus 1. Then you divide both sides by 2, so 2 and 2 cancel, and you get p is equal to n minus 1 over 2. And that's it. Okay, now the questions are getting really boring because they're so easy. So basically 9a is just asking you to solve this equation and you must show sufficient working so all you got to do is just multiply out these brackets first so you get 7 times x so 7x and 7 times negative 1 minus 7 is equal to 5 minus 2x then all you got to do is get the x's on one side and get the numbers on the other side so to do that you add 2x on both sides so you add 2x so you get 9x and then also you can add 7 on both sides, so you add 7 on this side, so you add 7 on this side. So these 7s cancel out, and you get is equal to 5 plus 7. So x, 9x is equal to 12. And x, divide 9 on both sides, divide 9 on both sides, is equal to 12 over 9, which is nothing but, if you simplify it by dividing both by 3, you get 4 over 3. So x is 4 over 3. Okay, so for 9b1, you're being asked to solve the inequality 4x plus 5 is less than or equal to 21. So now these inequality signs can pretty much be treated as um, normal equal signs. So all you got to do is subtract 5 on both sides. You get 4x is less than 21 minus 5, which is 16. Then all you got to do is divide both sides by 4. You get x is less than or equal to 16 divided by 4, which is 4. Okay, so in question 9b2, they're saying n, n is positive, so n is positive number. So, and they're saying that um, 4n plus 5 is less than or equal to 21. This is like the previous question we did. Write down all the values of n which satisfy 4n plus 5 uh, is less than or equal to 21. Uh, if we just solve this uh, inequality, we'll get n is less than or equal to 4. So that means n can be 3, n can be 2, n can be 1. But n has to be positive, so it can't be 0, it can't be negative 1, it can't be negative 2, and so on. So this is your answer. Oh, and uh, my mistake, sorry. n is also uh, less than or equal to 4, meaning it can also be 4. My bad. Those are the silly mistakes, yeah. Okay, so question 10 says that Kara, sal Kara's, Kara, I think, yeah. Kara's salary was increased from 28250 to $29,832. Okay, work out the percentage increase in Kara's salary. Um, all we got to do is this minus this to find the increase in salary. So 29,832 minus 28,250. And that will give us the increase in her salary, which is, which is $1,582 increase. Okay, so now they're asking you to find the percentage increase. So this is the increase in salary. So it was increased from this original uh, salary. So that means all we got to do is express this as the percentage of this, and we find the percentage increase. So all we got to do is do 1582 divided by 28250, and multiply this by 100, 
and we'll get a percentage. And that answer is, by using your nice little calculators, you get an answer of 5.6%. Okay, so they're saying Pedro's salary was increased by 5.2% as well, just like Cara. After this increase, his salary, salary was 28,141. Okay, first of all, we'll call his original salary X. So his original salary. Original. Okay, next. His add, his, uh, the amount added on to his original salary is nothing but 5.2 divided by 100 times X, right? So that's, his, that's the amount added on. So his original salary plus the amount added on should give me his new salary. So just put this in an equation. So you get X plus 5.2 divided by 100 times X should be equal to 28,141. So X plus 0.052X should give me 28,141. Now all you do is solve for X to find the original salary. And so this is 1x, and so it becomes 1x plus 0.052. x gives you 1.052x is equal to 28,141. Divide both sides by 1.052, you'll get x to be $26,26,750. Okay, so we're finally done with part 1 of paper 3H from 2008 of May. So please watch part 2 and comment, rate, subscribe, comment if you have any questions. Thanks a lot. I'm Dylan Mendonca and yeah.